Hey friends, Andrew Carruthers here, Education Director for Samvia. Today, we wanted to jump on and share some information about Shears. Specifically, my personal favorite, five, can't live without Shears because we get tons of questions about Shears. Of course, we're a Shear company, so we get tons of questions about, you know, which Shears should I buy? So we thought we'd jump on today and talk about Shears. <laughs> so I'm going to give you the top five shears that I'm personally using right now. And just know that if Sam himself was doing this live or if our art team, Jesse Linares or Anna Peters were doing this live, you'd probably get something different. Lady Libra, you're on here, especially for Lefty. And guess what? We've got almost every single shear in our line is available for you as a Lefty and then a true lefty. The only two that we don't have in true lefty are our two artist series shares, but everything else that I'll talk about today will come in a true lefty. Yay! <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Number one, this guy. So this is our one of our newest lines of shears. This is the Streamline Series shear. And as you can see, it's very, very highly sculpted. And we did that for a couple of reasons. We wanted to be incredibly ergonomic and incredibly comfortable for you to use, but also we sculpted out the blades. You can see all of this material that's removed there. We wanted this to be actually our lightest set of shears. So we were able to remove some material in places that didn't compromise the strength of the blades. So um, that's why we did the Streamline series. I've been super in love with this six and three quarter inch because we've been doing so much super textured hair right now, really a lot of movement in hair. And to do that, we have to have a blade that we can actually get in there and create that texture. So um, that six and three quarter inch here gives me the range, especially if we're point cutting, to get super, super deep into the hair as we cut. I probably would have put this guy which is our seven inch signature series shear. I probably would have put that at number one, even as recently as maybe two months ago, but I haven't been doing as much big compressed sections. You know, Sam and Jesse and I, we've been doing a lot more uh, individual section type cutting. For a long time, we were taking incredibly large sections and compressing them together and blasting through them where this year really excelled at that. But now that I kind of don't need the power of that seven inch dry cutting shear, I've been personally really enjoying the streamline. You can also see between the streamline, this is the streamline here, and the signature, the handle on the streamline is a little bit smaller and a little more sculpted. And I really, really like how this handle feels in, in my hands. Again, if Jesse was here, it would probably be this year. And actually I would think Sam too, if they were giving you their number one, it would probably be this. Sam would probably be choosing the solid thumb, I would think. And then Jesse would choose this year with the swivel thumb. I think those probably would be their number one shears. So a little different. I'm a high and Vera, nice to have you on here. <laughs> Hi hairdresser brother from hair Katuna style. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Hi, Jade. How are you? Oh, nice. We're getting lots of people jumping on. Very cool. This is actually our first YouTube live. We usually go live on Facebook, so we wanted to try uh, YouTube today. I have Roberto and Acacia, maybe? So, yeah, number one right now is that six and three quarter inch Streamline Series Shear. Um, by the way, I'm partially doing this today just because today is the last day of our Christmas in July sale. You guys, you can get 40% off any of our shears through the website through the end of today. Today is the last day for it. So if you're looking for shears, this would be an incredibly good time to, uh, to purchase. So that's number one. Let's hit number two. Number two spot will probably always be this shear because to me this is like just the essential shear that you have to have from Sambia. <laughs> this is the signature series reversible blending shear. This is a super unique blending shear. So if you look at this blending shear, you're going to notice that the tooth spacing is pretty tight together. 
compared to other blending shears, but each individual tooth is very, very small. So what this shear does is when you close the shear, it actually removes quite a bit of hair, but it's taking little tiny pieces, not big chunks. So even though it can be quite aggressive, I mean, you can really take some hair away with this shear, it leaves an incredibly soft edge. So the reason that we tend to love this shear and use the crap out of it <laughs> is simply because we can use it for so many things. We actually use it for cutting hair really often. So um, we'll use this especially to cut layers. We love this for shear over comb, especially for like my texture of hair because I don't like my sides to look too kind of shaved or too blunt feeling. So if you do shear over comb with this shear, you can get that really nice lived in, very soft look to it. Roberto, you're from Brazil, very cool. Hi Jan, how are you? Narina, thanks for the love, appreciate that. Thank you, Paul. You guys are all so nice to us, thank you. So yeah, number two spot has to go to the Signature Series. Here's a little hot tip for you with your blending shear. So like I said, this is a pretty aggressive blending shear. It takes a lot of hair away with each cut. So sometimes you don't want to take that much hair away. Here's what you can do, and you can do this with any blending shear you have. If you want to reduce the amount of hair that your blending shear takes from a section, take the solid blade, and just like your weave comb, if you were doing a weave, you just do a nice little weave through that section. That way, when you close, you're only affecting a certain amount of the hair. So as that section gets combed back together, you're not gonna take as much hair away from each individual section. So for with any blending shear that you're using, if you wanted to make it softer, if you wanna take less hair away, you can use that little weaving motion to do it. So um, hot tip for you there. Okay. Next shear, number three. This is also a blending shear. This is our signature series, um, <laughs> sorry, invisible end shear. So what's really unique about this shear is it's the polar opposite of the signature series reversible blending shear. So what's very unique about this shear is the tooth spacing is a little farther apart, but what makes this so soft is this, don't freak out here, this is actually not a blade, it's a polished surface. And what's cool about that is as you're closing, only the teeth are doing the cutting. So as you close, it allows the hair to slip forward across that polished blade. And so you're only cutting very, very small amounts of hair because it's allowing that hair to push into that next little missing tooth. But also, each tooth as it's cut, as it cuts is not cutting a flat straight line. Because the hair is moving as each tooth cuts, it cuts short to long, short to long, short to long. That's why we call this the invisible end shear because it creates these really invisible lines. So check this out. Let me move her even closer. And if some of you have seen our YouTube videos, you've probably seen this before. Hi Muhammad, thank you for joining us. And Chloe too, thank you. Awesome, love all the education. Very cool, thanks for joining us. Now, I would not be willing to do this with pretty much any other blending shear. We can get really aggressive in here, even up there in the fringe, and just close. And here's the thing, is by doing that, you can see it doesn't leave a line, and you're gonna see about 20 or so hairs fall out. If I did that with the other blending shear, you'd probably see about 100 hairs come out. So what this shear does so unique is it takes such small little pieces out that it's incredibly forgiving, but you can be so much more aggressive, especially in these short areas. Because a lot of times we're afraid to take weight out in the fringe or maybe a short neckline because we're worried if we take too many little holes, it'll start to stand up and push out. Here's the thing is if it's only a few little short hairs with plenty of longer hairs in between, it's not gonna take over and start pushing the hair out. You have to remember too that there are already hundreds of thousands of tiny little hairs dispersed through this whole head because of the natural shedding process. As they start to grow back in, of course, they're gonna spend time where they're only that long. So 
it's not so much that you can't be that aggressive and you can get those short hairs, but if you're gonna do it, you just have to be incredibly soft about it so that you don't put chunks in there. And that would be what will influence the hair and make it, make it pop up on you. So why do we make our shears, our blending shears reversible? Because this is a question we get very often. Number one, you can see by making it reversible, I can choose to have the solid blade on the bottom or solid blade on the top. Here's why this is important. Let's say I'm standing here with my guest. I want to get in here with the fringe and I take my shear, the teeth are pointing out right now, and I go to place it in, it's going to push the hair because the teeth are in the way. So instead of having to change my body position in some way to try and get that solid blade in there, which could be compromising good body position, we just take the shear and we flip it over. Now that solid blade's on the bottom. Now we can get in there, no problem. The other thing too is that what a lot of people don't know about a blending shear is whichever direction the teeth are facing, it can influence the ends of the hair to sit in that direction. The way I like to talk about this is, have you ever had a guest sit in your chair and they say, you know what? I don't know what you did last time, but my hair just fell perfectly. And in your head, you're going, well, I don't know what I did different either because I pretty much thought I gave you the exact same haircut I always give you. Well, it could have been as simple as the teeth of your blending shear were facing in a direction that made the ends fall really great. So little tiny things like that can actually have that effect on the hair. So that's why we make all of ours reversible. All right, number four in my personal top five can't live without shears right now is this guy. And it's because it is probably the most fun shear in our line. This is the Artist Series slide cutting shear. You can see that the design of the blades are actually curved. It's curving out. The reason for that is, is so that it allows the hair to push a little bit as you're cutting. When we're doing slide cutting, channel cutting, any kind of cutting with motion, what a lot of times happens is when we try to do that with a regular shear, because the blades are so sharp, and they're meant to trap the hair and not push the hair, we kind of feel the blade grab the hair. This shear was designed specifically for cutting in motion, so that's why that has that curvature. You'll also see that this side of the blade has a lot of strength to it, and this blade is actually weaker. Again, part of it is so that it allows the hair to push a little bit. So when you're doing these cutting in motion processes, it allows the hair to slip a little bit. And it also allows so that you don't get so aggressive and get in there and just get a big chunk when you do that. Um, what's really fun too with this shear is actually just point cutting. Because when you're point cutting with this shear, what it does is it allows the hair to push around as you cut. So you're not getting these really strong lines from the blade of the shear. You're getting a super soft sort of feel because the blade is actually influencing the hair to move around a bit. Hi, Daniela. Thank you for joining us. So number four is Artist Series slide cutting shear. And for those of you just joining us, this is my personal top five can't live without shears right now. It changes all the time because of just personal preferences and what we're doing more of, but we're seeing so much texture right now. So a lot of what I'm using right now is shears that are great for producing texture and hair. Long shears, texturizing shears, slide cutting shear. The one exception is gonna be this fifth shear. And I'm actually going to show you a total of six shears because this is such a tie right now. For me, I always have to have my favorite little shear because for, for details, for cutting in very small sections, using the big honking six and three quarter inch shear is just a little bit of a waste of energy. So much more efficient to pick up a smaller shear when we're working in those smaller sections and tighter spaces. The two shears that are really in a tie for this would be the five and a half Streamline Series shear and the six inch Signature Series Swivel shear. So um, for smaller shears, this is again, just please know this is my personal preference. 
For smaller shears, I really enjoy the swivel. I don't personally love the swivel on the larger shears. It just doesn't feel right in my hand. But again, if Jesse Linares, who's on our art team was here, that would be his number one favorite shear is our big seven inch swivel shear because it's so great for him and how it works with his body and with his hands. Just personal preference, right? So the reason I, I really dig a swivel for smaller shears is a lot of times with smaller shears, we're in those more complicated positions. So think about like a really nice steep graduated bob where you're here in the neckline, you've got your knuckles tucked real tight against the head, creating that diagonal angle. A lot of times what happens is we get into these kind of body positions. The elbow goes up, the shoulder gets tight, the wrist is kind of crinkled in there. Or if we go this way, if we try to keep the shoulder down, the wrist gets bent. So then again, the shoulder has to go up to compens compensate for that. So instead of doing all of those acrobatics, if we get the knuckles tucked in there, get that diagonal finger angle, watch. If I keep my thumb planted into that swivel, I can just allow the shear to rotate around. Let me change body position because I think it's easier to see from the opposite side. There's the thumb. I just keep my thumb and everything planted right where it is, and I just allow the shear to rotate in my hand. So look. Wrist is still straight, shoulder is still down, but we can still get into those tight little angles because it's a small shear, it's got that swivel to it, super, super efficient for that. So the tie for that is the Streamline Series five and a half, and back to the Streamline Series. And again, a lot of it is because of the handle. This is a little harder to show you guys on the video, but if you look, the thumb, the thumb handle you can see there's a big cutout right there, and there's a cutout in the front, and then also the finger ring. You can see how kind of polished and sculpted round that is. So the reason we did that is so that you can have similar kind of dexterity that you get from the swivel shear. Because of all the cutout, I can put that shear into many different positions within my hand, but watch the wrist, the wrist isn't changing. So I can cut more backhand, I can cut more forehand, all without changing wrist position. Now, of course, it's a little harder to get all the way down. What you can do if you have a solid thumb shear, that's kind of a cheat because we don't have the swivel, you can take the thumb out and actually slip it in the opposite side. And that gives you sort of that same positioning, I like doing this, um, Jesse does this a ton when he's cutting inside out to keep the wrist position. I can imagine that many of you have seen our YouTube stuff and if you haven't seen Jesse cut yet, please go check out some of his videos. We've, we've posted a lot of Jesse's material recently. He's such an awesome hair cutter and I think you'll really enjoy it. So this guy is just so lightweight, it's so lean. It's just a killer small shear for, <clears throat> especially when you're trying to do detail cutting, getting into tight little spaces, intricate sections, things like that. Jade, you're asking which one would you recommend for a pixie cut? Kind of depends a bit on what you're looking for as far as texture. If I'm looking for a ton of texture, then I might want to go a little bit larger than the five and a half. I mean. If the hair is this short, it's not like you really need a long blade to get even deep point cutting. So I would probably say like the five and a half or maybe the six and a quarter inch streamline. You could also look at the six and a quarter inch artist series shear, which has a kind of similar hand, uh, shape to the streamline, but even has more upgraded technology behind it. Because right now we're running 40% off today. The 19th is the last day of our Christmas in July sale. So if you're looking for shears right now, this would be a fantastic time. That artist series six and a quarter inch shear is usually a thousand dollar shear. So you can get 40% off of that. The Streamline series is I think 425. So it's an incredibly affordable shear. Everything in this signature series is somewhere around that 375 up to 425, 450 range. So you, you're already getting shears that are in a pretty affordable price range, but you add 40% off on top of that. 
It gets really incredibly affordable. Plus we do have a payment plan on the website now too. I always forget about that. Best friend in your thread. <laughs> I love your name, dude. That's awesome. That's fantastic. What are your lightest shears? Oh, just got here. So maybe those. Yeah, if you're looking for lightweight shears, it's gonna be the Streamline series. We have this in a five and a half, a six and, uh, sorry, six and a quarter inch. And my favorite shear right now on the planet is this guy. This is the Streamline series six and three quarter inch. So it's got a super long blade to it, but it's still crazy lightweight. All right, I think I saw a few other questions in here. We got to Jade's. Gisela, thanks for the love. Appreciate that. Hi, Daniela. Sahar. Cool. Lots of people joining us. Oh, man. That's an interesting name. Let Devon, maybe? Is that close? <laughs> so let's just review it real quick and then I'll let you guys go. So number one spot went to the six and three quarter inch streamline series shear. Again, I'm just loving these because the handle on the streamline is so, so incredibly comfortable. Plus the long blade just allows us tons and tons of texture. If you like a little bit more weight, you want something with some more meatiness to it, you could do the seven inch signature shear. And like I said, I think if Sam or Jesse were here, that would probably be number one for them. So then number two is the signature series reversible blending shear, just a super, super diverse blending shear. You can actually create really awesome shapes with it. Some of you might've seen, we posted a full length Bob haircut, I think two weeks ago to the YouTube channel. It's a full length 30 minute video where we walk you through how to create those really beautiful blunt bobs, but with a really, really soft edge, we do that with the Signature Series Reversible Blending Shear. So check that out if you haven't. Number three is going to be the Invisible End Shear. Like I said, just a super interesting shear because this is actually isn't a blade, only the teeth do the cutting. So as you're cutting, it just really allows that hair to slip through and you're not taking tons of hair away with each cut. Number four is definitely that Artist Series Slide Cutting Shear. This is such a fun shear for cutting in motion and keeping things incredibly soft, whether you're just doing kind of surface channel cutting like that, or sometimes again, we're using it while we're point cutting just because it allows that hair to slip around and move as you're cutting, giving that crazy soft edge. And then number five is actually number five and number six, which is a tie between the six inch uh, signature series swivel thumb, which we do have this in a five and a half as well, which that used to be probably number five for me. I was loving that shear. Then we came out with the five and a half inch streamline and I kind of fell in love with this more. I feel right now, I really like the six inch because of the balance of it for the swivel shear. So just my preferences, but five and a half inch streamline, can't beat it for a small shear. Um, Suzanne, you're asking, what do you recommend for small hands? I would highly recommend you look at that streamline series. As far as blade length, a lot of that's gonna just have to do with what exactly you're doing with the shear. So this is the five and a half inch. That looks huge, but it's not that big. It's because of the perspective of the camera. It's kind of a wide angle camera lens. So the five and a half would be a fantastic shear if you're doing smaller work, more intricate sections, more detail. Right now, I'm loving the big daddy. This is the six and three quarter inch shear, so you can see quite a bit of blade length. And there is one that's down there in my suitcase, but there's one that fits in between be in between these two. It's a six and a quarter inch. It is probably the best do everything shear in the line. I'm just kind of in love with this one more right now. So those would be the three I'd probably recommend if you're looking for something super light and especially for smaller hands because the handle is a reduced size from our signature series. Um, and just by the way, I mentioned handle. You'll notice all of our cutting shears have this kind of wild looking handle where that thumb is way down here. 
So the reason we do that is because, especially when we're thinking about repetitive use injuries like carpal tunnel and stress in the shoulders, that's what these shears are designed for, is to reduce the stress in your body. So two things about the handle. Number one, this is called a crane style handle. You can see that the finger is more parallel with the top of the shear. So typically what we see with shears is that finger comes up high. So it makes the hand kind of do this, which takes the elbow with it, elevates the elbow. So that crane style handle allows us to keep that elbow down. And I know for some of you, that kind of breaks the religion of hairdressing for you because you've been taught to cut with your elbows up. Thing is, cutting like this for 40 years behind the chair, you're probably gonna get some neck and shoulder pain, so you're gonna have to compromise a little bit. This is more comfortable and we can still be just as precise about our work. So that's the design of the handle. Then this forward set thumb, look how far forward that thumb is. Usually we're using shears that require our thumb to go way back here. When we do that, look at what happens to my palm. You can see how much tension starts to build here. And this is where carpal tunnel comes from. Your carpal tunnel is right through here. So the tension that you're building in here is pinching all that nerve tissue. So what we did is we moved the thumb way out here, which look how much more open my palm becomes by going from there, squished, much more open there. Very, very gentle on the hand, very gentle on the body, allows you to cut in a really natural position without putting stress on, on shoulders, neck, hands, wrist. So um, that's really the design of the shears. If you have any other questions, throw them in here real quick. Layla, you're so ready to chop your hair. Well, where do you live? Come on over. <laughs> Just kidding. Suzanne, you're very welcome. So guys, I hope you learned something today. I know I just showed you kind of my top five. Like I said, if Sam was here, Jesse or Anna, they'd probably choose a different five, but that's just my top five. Hopefully by discussing those, it gives you some light on how you can choose the best year for you. Please remember, if you're watching this live or you get to see this today on the 19th of July, Today is the last day of our Christmas in July sale, 40% off on the website. So if you're looking for shears, please head over there and check that out. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate your time and energy, and thanks for supporting the channel. I'm Andrew Carruthers, Education Director for Sambia. See y'all.